Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I've got on the bench this week for us to take a look at is my motorcycle helmet. And this is a dual sport helmet, um, which for the uninitiated just means that it's a helmet that's designed for both on and off-road use. So it has some kind of characteristics of an off-road helmet like the, uh, this visor and that it opens up pretty wide here on the face shield, um, but it's also designed and rated for road use um, as well. And what I designed for this helmet is a GoPro mount for the front. Um, I've always run a GoPro on the chin bar on my motorcycle helmets. I think it gives you the best view. I'll drop a clip here for you to take a look at. Um, but on this helmet, the way that the chin bar is shaped, it was really, really hard um, to get any of the off-the-shelf mounts to work. Uh, mostly because it has this sharp curve here in the chin bar. I'll get a little closer so you can kind of see that profile. And on my old helmet, I had used like an inverted hat clip mount from GoPro, and that I worked pretty well. Could not make it work on this, in this helmet. In fact, I actually broke two of those, those mounts trying to get them to work on this helmet. Eventually gave up, realized I was going to need to design my own. So this is the design I came up with, and this is one of those designs where I went through a lot of iterations until I was happy with it. I wanted to really perfectly match the profile of the helmet, have it lock in underneath the chin bar, as well as lock into the, uh, the, the vent here on uh, the, the helmet. I don't know if you can see that in and amongst all the dust and dirt, but there is sort of a tooth there uh, that locks in um, on that, uh, that vertical piece on the vent. And then there is a piece that goes into the, the actual chin bar to lock in. In fact, let me grab a spare one. Okay, so here's the same piece not installed on the helmet. And you can see how far that clips in underneath the chin bar. And then you can also see the component that locks in up here on the vent. And I've been very happy with this mount. Um, I know a lot of guys will mount uh, a GoPro on the side of the helmet or on the top. Um, I don't like side mounting because you get uneven wind resistance on the road. It's the helmet's constantly, or the, I should say the GoPro, the wind resistance from the GoPro is constantly trying to pull your head to the side a little bit. On the top also gives you a good view. The problem is, for any of you guys that have ever ridden off road, if you've got a GoPro or basically anything on the top of your helmet, it's not staying there. Um, if you ride tight single track like I do, uh, the first section of trees that you come to is just going to rip that GoPro right off. And even worse, you're not going to know it's been ripped off um, and you're liable to spend the rest of your day trying to backtrack and find that GoPro if it's a nice one. So let me show you how a GoPro goes on here and give you an idea of just how tightly it fits against the helmet as well. Um, this, is a, this is a Hero 9, but all the GoPros have the same mount. And this guy just slides right in here and then this piece locks it in. Again, just like that you're familiar with on any other GoPro mount. And the angle of this mount allows this to drop all the way back against the helmet. Um, but I found the right angle, at least for the Hero 9. It does vary a bit because they're all slightly different thicknesses. But with the Hero 9, it works best out almost kind of parallel with that bar. So I'll be right about there, I think, is where I usually have it. And you can see just kind of a side view profile of the whole helmet, just how low profile that is. And when you're riding on the street, that does make a big difference. Um, not having the added wind resistance of a big, thick mount, um, either on the side or on the front. Um, I, I have seen other mounts that work with this helmet specifically. This is a Hornet X2 by, I think it's Shoei. Shoei, Shoei? I'm not sure how that's pronounced. You guys will probably connect, correct me down in the comments. Um, but they make ones that are kind of universal that have like big tabs that come down the front side of the, the helmet or ones that have just a big plate uh, up here on the chin bar that are designed to mount higher up. Problem is they end up blocking this, this, uh, this vent and the camera itself comes out a lot further because to have a universal mount here and still have the angle, uh, it kind of comes out in like a big huge thing and then you end up with the camera out maybe an inch and a half, two inches from the helmet itself. So I've been very happy with this. Uh, if you guys that are watching this also have a Shoei uh, Hornet X2 helmet, um, I'll put the STL on my site, FPF. Uh, designs.com and I'll also link to this is the hardware you're going to need um, for, for this as well. It comes in like a pack. These are stainless steel and includes the, the nuts that press into the little hole there on this piece as well as the, uh, the, the screw part here that holds it in place. And it's the longer style so you're not trying to reach in there with your thumbs um, and get it. You can get it from the outside of the GoPro which gives you better leverage. 
So let's go take a look at the design for this and see if there is anything that I missed. Okay, so here's the design for this. And uh, first thing I'm gonna mention is if you look at my file name here, this is version 25 of this. I really went through a lot of effort to match the exact contour or the profile of the, of the helmet, um, even allotting for the curved shape of the, the chin bar. Um, and then the curved section here that goes into inside the, uh, the chin bar and locks it into place. Actually, when I designed this, since there was nothing on the market for this helmet and it's a fairly popular helmet, I, I plan to actually sell these. And in fact, I do have these for sale on uh, my motorcycle website, uh, piratemoto.com, uh, um, spelled P-Y-R-8-Moto.com. And I will link to that um, down below in the description of this video if you don't have a 3D printer and you want to get one of these. I never advertised it. I think I sold probably a dozen of them, but um, if you want one, you can get one from there. If you've got a 3D printer though, uh, I'm going to post the STL for this and you will be able to download it and just make your own. So one thing I did leave out when talking about the design was you notice all these shapes here on the inside. Now these are not for show. You don't see these um, once this is in place. Again, this is the face that you see on the front. Um, everything here is just for glue to go ahead and get into all these grooves and lock this guy in place. The, the chin bar down here does lock it pretty well, um, and this up here keys it into to place. Uh, but I use a glue called Shugu, um, which I will also link below, below, that works really, really great for um, most 3D printed plastics. I do this in PETG, um, as well as whatever the material that the outer casing of the helmet is made from. Um, you can, with enough force, you can get it to come off and then you can just peel the glue off with your fingernail, but it does a really great job locking it uh, into, uh, into place. And if you notice, this looks, there's a couple things on this that look different from the sample uh, I showed you. These are actually uh, supports that print um, as part of the STL. So this guy prints facing down on the, the platen like this. And these two pieces here are just uh, built-in supports. I cut these. Actually, I used to cut these off with the with the uh, nippers. I found that it's even better to just take a pair of needle nose pliers and just reach in, grab this, and just twist it right off. I did the same thing for this guy. And then these are also supports uh, that print in place that just snap right out. I will score these with an X-Acto knife um, and then just reach in with the same pair of needle nose pliers and rotate them right out. So if I hide those, you can see that's just a standard GoPro mount. And you could let your uh, whatever your slicing program generates support material in there if you want, but I can tell you from my own experience and having printed a number of these, it works way better to just use the integrated supports. So that's it. Um, I hope uh, somebody ends up watching this that has the, the same um, Shui Hornet X2 helmet. And uh, if you've got a 3D printer, it's ready to go. Otherwise, if you do want one, like I said, I will link to where I actually sell these. Um, but thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I do a new design every single Friday. Uh, I feature something that, that either I've come up with to solve a specific problem in something I own or something around the shop, or I'll focus on someone else's uh, design and how it solved a problem for them. So hope I earned your subscription. Um, really helps the channel out. If you subscribe and you give me a thumbs up, lets me know you guys are actually watching these videos and interested in seeing more. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next Friday.